it's 81 degrees midday in Tryon, North Carolina at higher ground. And uh, I hear the squeal of about uh, 10 or 11 young children down at the beach. Uh, family is having a family reunion, joyful sounds of all of those children, uh, all below the age of 10 or so. And a uh, number of brothers and sisters who are enjoying each other's company. It's a great time to, to see people enjoying a family and being able to get along with one another. And hopefully that will happen for the rest of their days of reunion. We we're talking about the apostles. We looked at the three least known apostles first. Then we looked at John, one of the best known apostles, brother of James. And today we want to look at Philip. Philip has 13 references in the New Testament by name. He's listed as the fifth of the disciples in the four places that all of the apostles are listed. Uh, so that's a pretty consistent to listing in fifth. He's not to be confused with the uh, brother of Herod, nor to be confused with one of the seven deacons of Acts 6-5. Uh, we do know he's from Bethsaida. Uh, we know that he was called, and the calling of Philip was very significant because it says that Jesus purposed to go into Galilee and found Philip. Jesus went searching out Philip. Isn't that interesting? When you think about that, that's what he did with us too, isn't it? He purposely searched us out and called us to himself. Well, in any case, he said, come follow me. He didn't give Philip a three-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. He just said, Philip, come follow me. And Philip did. Uh, we find uh, that he was uh, insightful. We find that he uh, uh, took some training. Uh, he was... Uh, immediately looking for Nathaniel. And he went to Nathaniel and he says, uh, come and find the one that Moses and the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. And yet uh, Nathaniel was doubtful and questioning and uh, probably biased and prejudiced because he asked uh, Philip, he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can, can anything good come out of Cana? Uh, Philip shows some wisdom in the fact that instead of arguing with Nathaniel, he said, come and see. You know, I think sometimes that's the approach we ought to take when we invite people to church. When they say, well, the roof will fall in, or I don't have any use for organized religion, and we start to debate them and argue with them and it forces us to choose sides. They decide of not going to church and us decide of trying to force them to go to church. When maybe we ought to take Philip's approach and say, come and see. You don't have to come back again. Just come and see if there's something there for you. Well, in any case, at the feeding of the 5,000, it's really interesting because it says that Jesus, when he got there to the area where Philip was from, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread so that these can eat? <laughs> now, to show you how uh, Philip was an analytical, statistical, uh, monetary uh, kind of mindset, um, he quickly assesses the situation. He says 200 denarii would not be sufficient for each one just to have a little. Now you can't appreciate that because that's not dollars and cents and uh, you don't deal in denarii very often. So let me just share with you that a denarii was a day's wages. And if you took 200 and multiplied it times a day's wages in today's dollars, that'd probably be around $12,000. Now, that's a lot of money when you think about it until you start dividing 5000 into $12,000 and you find out that it's just a few dollars per person, uh, which you can't go to McDonald's and get anything to eat for a couple of dollars a person. You say, what about the dollar menu? Well, that'll get you a tiny hamburger and a small drink. <laughs> 
Uh, but in any case, Philip assessed the situation quickly. And it says very interestingly that Jesus was testing Philip. Now that's quite interesting, testing Philip. Did Philip pass the test? Well, we don't have a direct answer because at that point Andrew interceded and Andrew said he had found someone with some loaves and fish and Jesus quickly divided up the people into groups fed the 5,000 and there was lots left over. But I think if you read between the lines, Philip didn't argue. Philip joined in with the other apostles and helping to serve the people and to organize the crowd. He didn't quit and say, this is ridiculous. You know, we can't feed the world. I think we could learn a lot by Philip's reaction that's not written in the scripture. Nevertheless, we know that Philip stayed with Jesus, so he didn't quit, he didn't give up, and he didn't think that anything was too difficult for Jesus to do. And in John chapter 12, when some Greeks came to Philip and wanted to see Jesus, he went and got Andrew, and he and Andrew took the Greeks to Jesus. You see, Philip was one that was ready to bring people to Jesus. We all need to be ready to bring people to Jesus even if we need somebody else to go with us. In John 14, verse 8, we find that Philip was somewhat of a slow learner, but not too shy to ask questions and to probe deeper. For when there was a discussion about Jesus and who he was, Philip said, well, show us the Father, that'll be enough. And Jesus gives Philip a gentle rebuke by saying, have you been with me so long that you don't know that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? It had to have hurt a little bit, but nevertheless, sometimes gentle rebukes are necessary in our lives. And Philip would have something to think about. So did Philip pass the test? Maybe if you looked at the fact that he never did say, Jesus, whatever you can do, I believe. Uh, maybe he didn't understand that they had already seen the Father when they saw Jesus. But we have to come back to that final question, did Philip pass the test when Jesus tested him? Uh, let me just share with you, Philip stayed with him through the crucifixion and resurrection. He stayed with them with the zeal of witnessing. He went out for Jesus two by two and witnessed in the community. He worked happily and cooperatively with the others in order to accomplish the task that Jesus set out when he said, it is finished. Did Philip pass the test? Sure he did. He was imperfect, just like you and I are imperfect. He had doubts and questions, which he was not afraid to ask and find answers for. But he was fat. <laughs> you know by now what that means when I say fat. He was faithful, he was available, and he was teachable. You know, a lot of us can be faithful. Some of us can be available. But an awful lot of us are not teachable. We think we know all the answers. I think it'd be wise for all of us to step back today as we look at Philip. Realize that Jesus tested him. Did he pass the test? Yes, he did. He was teachable. He stayed with Jesus through thick and thin, learned and grew, was instrumental. And remember, he was listed fifth out of 12. Jesus, 12 that turned the world upside down, actually 11, if you really want to be honest about it. He was fifth out of 11. Wonder how we would stack up today if God was to evaluate living disciples living apostles, and he was to say, where would I place him in the ranking? Philip passed the test. He stayed fat, faithful, available, and teachable. Your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.